Hello, this is an introduction to Zap by Checkbox. My name is Simon Bennett and I'm the Zap project lead. So what is Zap? Zap is a tool for finding vulnerabilities in web applications. It doesn't really work by looking for known vulnerabilities in known applications. It works more like a penetration tester or a malicious attacker, so it can find new vulnerabilities in applications that no one's ever seen before. It is free and open source. It's community based as well. It's run by the Zap core team and supported by checkmarks. Involvement is actively encouraged and anyone can get involved. Zap is cross platform, so it runs on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. In fact, all it needs is Java to run. We've even got it running on a Raspberry Pi. Zap is well maintained. This is important because there are lots of other uh, web scanners that have been released as open source, but which are no longer maintained. Zap is one of the very few well maintained open source web scanners. Zap can run as a desktop, it can run from the command line, it can run as in daemon mode, it can run in Docker and GitHub Actions. There are lots of different ways to run Zap depending on what your requirements are. And Zap is probably the world's most popular web scanner. It is used by many of the biggest companies in the world, including those in the technology and financial areas. So what does Zap do? This is your application, and this is your application running. So it has, it's a web application, has an HTML and or API interface. And that's what your users interact with, via HTML or an API. But your application doesn't exist in isolation. It is created by code, um, which is compiled to create your application. And it's based on a set of libraries that you've, in, you've included, which are also built in when, when the application is compiled. So if you know about other security tools, you might have heard of SAST or Static Application Security Testing. This actually tests your code, it looks at your code, it analyzes your code to find potential vulnerabilities. Then there's SCA or Software Composition Analysis, and this analyzes the libraries you use looking for known vulnerabilities in those libraries. So both SAST and SCA analyze the components that make up your application, but they're not actually attacking them, they're just looking at the, um, the contents of how your application is built. SAP works differently. It is a DAS tool, it's a dynamic application security testing tool, and this actively attacks your application in the same way a malicious att attacker might. So the, all of these tools have different perspectives. No one technique is better than the others. And if you care about the security of all your applications, you should be using all of them. So how does Zap actually work? Zap is really, it's kind of like an integrated hacking environment. So similar to an integrated development environment. It is a set of very flexible tools that can do lots of different things. Zap has a core and then a load of add-ons, some of which we include by default and some of which you can add via the Zap marketplace. All of these add-ons are of course free and open source. You can run Zap in manual mode or you can automate it and it has some very powerful scripting options, probably more powerful than any of the commercial tools out there. So Zap is actually quite a complex product, as you can see, um, but there are, it, we can explain a simple use case quite easily. The first of all, you'll need to authenticate to the application, your target application. Now you can do this manually by logging in via a browser proxy through Zap, or you can configure Zap to handle the authentication. Then you need to explore the application or get Zap to explore it. Now you can explore your application manually via a browser proxied through, through Zap where you just explore your application and navigate all the way around it. Or Zap has three spiders, all of which can crawl the application in different ways and have different strengths and weaknesses. You can also import a wide range of API definitions so that Zap can really understand exactly what APIs your, your application provides. And as you're exploring your application, Zap automatically does passive scanning. So it looks at the requests and responses that are flowing through Zap or generated by Zap, and it can actually identify a set of vulnerabilities just on that basis. But it, those aren't the most serious vulnerabilities it can find. The most serious ones it can find are via attacking. This is the active scanning that Zap does. So this is where Zap actually attacks the application, sends 
uh, potentially malicious payloads uh, and tries to analyze and, and work out ways of compromising your application. Finally, uh, you can generate a report and you can look at the you can look at the results within Zap. You can generate an HTML or structured data report, or you actually can into um, send these results to your bug tracker. Now, automation is a key part of Zap and one of its strengths, and there are lots of different ways you can automate Zap. We have a, a quick option called Zap It, which allows you to just do a very quick test of the the first URL in an application, and that can tell, actually tell you a lot of information about the that application without doing any crawling or attacking. Then we have a quick start option. Uh, again, this is very easy to use, but like Zapit, it's very limited in functionality and it's not very flexible. We have a set of package scans, and these run within Docker. And the, the limited set of functionality, but quite thorough, they cover a lot of things. Uh, so reasonably flexible and reasonable functionality. We have a set of GitHub actions which are based on the package scans. So again, quite easy to use and relatively flexible. But if you want to do a lot of um, automation or more complex automation, the best option is probably going to be the automation framework. So that is relatively easy to use, it's well documented and is incredibly flexible. But if you want the maximum amount of flexibility, then we've got an API. That is a little bit more complex. You have to actually understand what Zap is doing behind the scenes, but is very flexible and gives you access to nearly all of the Zap functionality. So that was a very quick overview of Zap. If you want to learn more, then have a look at the website, zaproxy.org. And of course, Zap is uh, active on all of the main social media sites. Thank you very much.